Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to uh, gather together on this resurrection day. We have been um, blessed because, you know, the Lord has redeemed us, called us, and, uh, you know, He has given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Today, as we remember the resurrection day, let us understand what resurrection is. It was a glorious event. It was an extraordinary event. Never anything happened like this in the history of the world. The whole plan of God culminated in this extraordinary event. Heaven and earth was looking forward to this event. There must have been great rejoicing in heaven, excitement in heaven, as he walked out of the grave, alive forevermore. It gives me the thrill just to say that. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 13 and 14, he said like this, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not risen. If Christ not be risen, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith also is in vain. Resurrection is the very foundation of our faith, very foundation of Christianity. Without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. You and me cannot be born again. Today, my question to you is this. Is the resurrection just a story in the Bible? Is it just an event in our mind? Is it just something we should remember once a year? But there is more to it. Paul says in Philippians 3.10, he said like this. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. There is something more to resurrection than just an event which occurred 2000 years ago. We need to understand the resurrection from the scripture point of view and know what it is all about. Today we are going to study it in three uh, points. The first point is the power of resurrection. We are going to, second point we are going to see is the blessings of resurrection. The third point we are going to see is the grace of resurrection. In this time where everybody is obsessed or occupied with coronavirus, it is, it is more appropriate to see that a resurrection is a far more important thing for us to concentrate on, far more important for us to meditate upon, far more important for us to study it. You know the story of resurrection very well. I don't have to go over it. You know how the Lord Jesus died on the cross. You know on the third day, uh, on that day they buried him in a stone grave nearby the Calvary. It was the grave of a rich man called Joseph of Arimathea. Nobody had been laid there before. It was carved into the rock and they put a huge stone uh, on it so that they will not, uh, disciples will not come and steal away his body. And the Roman soldiers had sealed the stone. In those days, if you are in Rome, if a Roman seal is there, the penalty of breaking the seal is death by crucifixion. So nobody would dare to open that seal. So that was the situation. And here it so happens that God doesn't go by what Romans think. God goes by what he plans. Resurrection at the time of the Jews when Lord Jesus was there. If you read the Gospels, it was a very controversial issue. The Pharisees believed in it. The Sadducees did not believe it. The Jewish uh, people, the religious authorities were divided into two groups. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Sadducees were people who followed the law by the letter. They did not believe in tradition. But the Pharisees only followed tradition. They could override the law by tradition. You know in Matthew 23, Lord Jesus has told a lot about it. You can read about it. So... The Jewish community as a whole, uh, they thought resurrection was very an abstract. It is something we, they don't, didn't have to deal with it every day. They knew about it, but they didn't think much about it. They, these scholars also taught the Jews the same way. The disciples also never really thought about resurrection until Lord Jesus mentioned it to them. Even then, it was something which did not, they did not grasp. You see, the lead, Lord Jesus has uh, told the disciples on more than one occasion that he will die and be raised on the third day. But probably they did not understand. We could never understand too if 
the Holy Spirit had not revealed to us the scripture. In Matthew 16, 21, he told, um, uh, uh, the Bible says, From that time on, Lord Jesus showed his disciples how they must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be ra raised again on the third day. From what time? From that time means from the time when the disciples were convinced that he was the Messiah. He revealed that to the disciples that he will be killed and he will rise again on the third day. A few verses before this, um, Lord had asked the disciples in Matthew 16, um, 15, 14, 15. He said, who do you think? say I am? And Peter answered him and said, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Christ in Greek is Greek of Messiah. Christ and Greek are the same words. Messiah in Hebrew, Christ in Greek. Both mean the anointed one. His disciples did not believe him completely. I'm trying to give you a concept of the resurrection that was almost abstract. Like the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that it is going to happen, but it is not something we look at it every day. We don't live our lives with the, with the point, with the focus that he is going to come. Similarly was the situation with um, resurrection in the minds of the disciples. Many other times in the Gospels, Lord Jesus mentioned to his uh, disciples that he's, he would suffer, he would die, he would rise again on the third day. But still, they were not ready. When Judas betrayed Lord Jesus Christ, the soldiers arrested him. And the disciples ran away helter-skelter. Apostle John could get some access to the Sanhedrin where the judgment of Lord Jesus was taking place. He got Peter in also. And they watched as the chief priest wove a, a, a concept, wove a plan, a conspiracy to, um, to make sure that Lord Jesus will die. So when the judgment was in progress, Peter denied Lord Jesus three times before the cock crowed thrice. The judgment took place in the night because it was very late when they got him. All through the night the judgment took place. The Lord Jesus was then sent to Pilate to the judgment seat of Rome. After a false conviction, a travesty of justice where justice was broken, it was not true justice, Lord Jesus was sentenced to be crucified on, and on the cross. He was taken to Calvary. By the time he reached Calvary, it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. Only John followed him among his disciples. All his disciples had scattered. All what the Lord had taught had been gone away because of the fear of being associated with him. They were afraid that they would be crucified too. All disciples were at their homes wondering what is going to happen. They had completely given up everything to follow him. Now... He was crucified as a blasphemer, a person who spoke against God. They would have been wondering if they will also be punished because all the time they were going around with him. Then Lord Jesus died around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and then he was buried the same day. Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple, um, opened his own grave which he had made ready for himself and buried him there. A great stone was rolled and so they were sealed. The buzz quietened down in the city. People almost went back, all the people went back home. They forgot about Lord Jesus Christ. The women were getting ready because the next day was Sabbath. They were getting ready the spices so that they will go on the first day of the week to anoint his body. You know, the Jews never embalmed like the Egyptians. They just put spices on the body so that it will remove the stink. That was the idea. The stone was a big stone. Normally it would have taken six to eight Roman soldiers to roll upon it. And then something happens. There is a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord comes and rolls away the stone and sits upon it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grave is empty. Doubt and joy mixed together in the, in the women. An incredible event has taken place which they could not even believe. Our Lord lives. Hallelujah. After seeing the risen Savior, the disciples are transformed. You see, this is the power of resurrection. This is available for you and for me, my dear brothers and sisters. The resurrection 
the power of the resurrection is the power of transformation peter the same peter who decided denied his master who ran away from the cross when lord jesus was arrested who went back to fishing thinking that everything is over the same guy the awkward bumbling man he becomes bold as a lion in acts 1 he is taking control if you read acts 1 he stands up and says oh we have to choose somebody in the place of judas he died and he takes control he becomes bold as a lion that my dear brothers and sisters is the power of resurrection resurrection has the power to deliver you from your fears and make you bold as a lion you will walk tall because lord jesus christ is alive forevermore where there there is weakness you will be made strong by due to the power of resurrection men have faced in history church history men have faced animals fierce animals they have faced cannibals they have faced hostile environments extreme temperatures all because of resurrection they know their redeemer lived that's why they were bold as a lion george stott was a teacher with only one leg his other leg had been cut because of some childhood disaster he volunteered for a missionary service to china when they asked him why he thought of going to china with only one leg he said i don't see with people with two legs going so i am going to go this is the power of resurrection the resurrection was the main thing of apostolic preaching the authorities were grieved because of the preaching of resurrection in acts 42 the bible says being grieved that they thought people and preached through jesus the resurrection from the dead resurrection from the dead is going to be a sore point these days you will never hear about resurrection the apostolic power is not there today because nobody is preaching about resurrection it is time we change resurrection is the power of the gospel my dear brothers and sisters you see in acts 433 the bible says and with great power the apostles wit- uh, witness of the res- uh, gave witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all that was the secret of the power of the apostles the preaching on resurrection let us tap into the power of god my dear brothers and sisters by meditating on the re- resurrection let us receive the power of resurrection let us take hold of it and preach the resurrection of our lord jesus christ that is the only difference between us and the rest of the world rest of the religions rest of the faiths that our god has no grave hallelujah Amen. there is no grave yes. there is a grave for every other god yes. or a, um, a religious religious leader but lord jesus there is no grave his grave is empty Amen. hallelujah we are hallelujah. celebrating that today let us rejoice in that as you read through uh, scripture god you will find that god has made available same power to us in first corinthians 6:14 the bible says and god hath both raised up the lord and will also raise us up by his own power when speaking about overcoming unrighteousness in this chapter paul talks about the power which raised his son will also raise us up countless men of god missionaries church planters have known this power of the resurrection they have attempted great things for god they have received grace to do extraordinary work the resurrection was not a one time display of power it is and it's available to every believer it is your and my right to receive this power the power of resurrection it is best illustrated in the life of mr john geddy he was a teacher in no halifax nova scotia one day he sends the call uh, to go to preach <clears throat> in 1846 he sailed from halifax nova scotia to the south seas the cannibalistic islands with a wife and two small children his parting message was this it is worth reading in accord with the redeemer's command and assured of his resurrected presence we are going forth to the islands where satan has established this dark domain i know that suffering awaits me but to bear the redeemer's yoke is an honor to one who has felt the redeemer's love the island they reached in 1948 was filled with cannibals 
a few months earlier before they reached there was a shipwreck near the island and these cannibal had eaten 22 human beings it was a terrible time in you know he went there and they started their ministry <clears throat> 22 years later he left there was a plaque in the church it says like this when he landed in 1848 there were no Christians here and in, when he left in 1872 there were no heathen no. it's a great testimony great testimony the resurrection power this is what it is my dear brothers and sisters let us not waste it let us not be after a very cheap imitation of it let us look for the real power what made him the lion this man John Getty they say he was a short guy and very unassuming was the power of resurrection each one of us are capable to do this to our cities that is the power of resurrection resurrection is not a story it is the power of God now we go to the second one the blessings of resurrection I have four points here the second thing I want to talk about resurrection is the blessings of resurrection when the Lord died on the cross and he rose again and ascended to heaven we received the Lord Holy Spirit as a direct replacement of him because the Lord Holy Spirit is the present in everywhere and Lord Jesus as a man couldn't stay with us so he sent us the Holy Spirit the power of resurrection is also the spirit of God the Bible says Romans 8 11 but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you Romans 8 if you see talks about the life in Christ is one of my favorite chapters the resurrection was accomplished through the Spirit of God we are the temple of Holy Spirit the blessing of resurrection is the Lord Holy Spirit who is given to us and will bring life to our bodies Romans 8 8 says so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God though we are in flesh we cannot continue to operate according to the flesh the Spirit of God as it says Romans 8 13 mortifies helps us to modify the deeds of the flesh so we do not have to live according to the flesh but we can experience the blessings of resurrection in our mortal bodies you see the Lord Holy Spirit is the master he knows what is in the mind of God he knows what is in our mind he will try to bring the will of God in our lives as we pray in the Holy Spirit as we pray along according to his will as we pray with fellowship of the Holy Spirit he will teach us what is not necessary in our lives and we have to allow him to mortify these deeds in our flesh the second blessing of resurrection is our justification the Bible says Roman 4 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification the Bible says if you read Romans 4 chapter, it's a chapter of justification by faith. It says justification is by faith. The price of justification is the resurrection. He was raised for our justification. We stand before the throne of God boldly because of him rising from the grave. We have been justified by his resurrection. The Lord says, here Lord, I am the lamb for their sin. I am the lamb for the sin my daughter has committed, my son has committed. I am going to uh, cover their sin. So God will overlook our sin. He will pass over our sin. Hallelujah. And the power of resurrection will work in us. If, if you read Romans, the whole fourth chapter, you will see he is talking about it. He talks about Abraham. You know, Abraham was um, promised a son. But he had already become 100 years old. His wife was 90 years old. The way of bearing a child with Sarah had completely stopped. And Lord said, I will give you a child. Abraham believed God. What he believed was, he believed that even though his wife's womb was dead, he knew that God is able to make it alive and remove the deadness of the womb and make it alive. That's the faith God is looking for you and for me. This is the power of resurrection. God is able to 
remove the dead flesh in us, the dead body in us and make it alive for himself. And that is the faith that if you have something which is causing death in your life, for example, you have an habit of telling lies, for example, the Lord will mortify the deeds in our flesh and give us a spirit of truth. Because the Bible says, a lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. So that's how you uh, believe God to change your um, flesh, which is causing you to die, to bring it to life. Not just life, but just complete transformation of the body. The same can occur for us in our flesh. We can be mortified in the deeds of the flesh and start to live the abundant life. Our flesh is against the abundant life. Our flesh tries to drag us down. Abundant life tries to lift us up. It, it, we, we have to be careful to feed the abundant life, not the death. The more we uh, live the worldly way, the more we follow the worldly way, we will be feeding our flesh. So the flesh will get stronger. But if you feed your spirit through the word of God, through uh, singing, through praising God, to worshipping God, to fellowship with uh, people who are talking about God, you will be feeding the spirit. So your spirit man will grow stronger. The third thing, so the first one was the Holy Spirit is the blessing of resurrection. The second is justification. The third blessing of resurrection is a lively hope. 1 Peter 1.3, the Bible says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ has begotten us again to a lively hope. That means a living hope. The word for lively is a, you know, rejoicing, extraordinarily alive uh, hope. It is a word from Zoe. Zoe means full of life in Greek. He says to, what is that hope? In 1 Peter 1, 4 he says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That is the hope. We have an inheritance from God. Incorruptible, nobody can change it. Nobody can destroy it. It is given to you. It is undefiled and it fadeth not away. And it is reserved for us in heaven. That is the hope. The resurrection brings this hope. When you, when you have the power of resurrection, it is the, the blessings of resurrection, you will have this hope that God has already give, put me something. I don't need to look for things here. I don't need to look after the world. I don't need to look at things, uh, seek after the things of the world. Because the Bible says, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You'll see when you seek after resurrection, when you seek after the power of resurrection, your, your focus on the worldly things will fade away. We are being given this inheritance in God. We look for the uh, inheritance in heaven. Our eyes are on this hope. Where, uh, today we live like orphans in this world. We live like a person who has, had, has an inheritance of a million dollars and we live as a homeless person. That's what we are doing. This is the state most Christians are living in. We are looking at the trinkets on the world. We are looking at the things of the world. We are looking here and there for the worldly things. And that we have to change. We have to set our focus on God. The, and the power of resurrection will teach us how to transform from the worldly uh, creature to a spiritual creature. The fourth blessing of resurrection is a good conscience towards God. 1 Peter 3.21 The Bible says, The like figure wherein to even baptism that also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The first thing we need to understand is, Peter here says, there is a relationship between the flood of Noah and our baptism. That is in like manner, one, like, as one is, so is the other. In other words, Noah was not saved by the flood, but God saved him through the flood. Hallelujah! In the same way, we are not saved by our baptism, but we are saved through the baptism. Thus, God saves us 
brings us safely through our baptism just as he did Noah. Similarly, it is not the outward washing of our filth, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You want a good conscience before God? You need to uh, meditate on the resurrection. You need to ask, Lord, I want this power. I want this power of resurrection. You see, Paul also cried, I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. We saw in Philippians 3.10. God, God is in, in, uh, um, expecting us to ask him for this. There you have it. Four blessings of resurrection. The Holy Spirit. The justification, the lively hope and the good conscience. My dear brothers and sisters, it is time for us not to be worldly any longer, but to change our lives, to be answerable, to, uh, to set ourselves to be answerable for, a, for, in, for this resurrection. The resurrection demands obedience from us. The re re resurrection demands us to uh, give an answer in, through our lives. To the great power that he showed that day when he rose from the uh, dead. The third point in my main uh, um, sermon is the grace of resurrection. You see Acts 4.33 the Bible says. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. If you read the book of the Acts of the Apostles. You'll find the apostles were ordinary people. Most of them did not even have education, but they did an extraordinary job. Today, the Christians are extraordinary people, but they do an ordinary job. So sad. It has turned around. 2000 years it took for everything to turn around. The, the transformation of the apostles was beyond, is beyond human understanding. A weak, cowardly, Fearful bunch were transformed into bold lions. They were not afraid of anything. You could throw anything against them and they would still be bold. They would still be rejoicing. They will be still praising. They will never complain. Hallelujah. This is what God expects from us. You could whip them. You could imprison them. You could threaten them. You could stone them. You could kill them. You could put them in the water. You could throw them from a building. They would still be rejoicing. Acts 16, if you read, it's a great story. Um, Paul was, and Silas were imprisoned. What did they do? Did they complain about prison? Did they complain about food? Did they complain about the conditions of prison? No. What they were doing? They were rejoicing. They were singing praises to God. So God answered supernaturally. We need to go back to that, my dear brothers and sisters. It is the power of resurrection. The fact, the resurrection shows our God is alive and we should be as bold as lion because our God is with us. We should never behave that God is not with us. Because if you believe in resurrection, today Lord Jesus is with us. Hallelujah, you believe it or not. The apostles believed it and they did a wonderful job, great job. I see if you saw that Acts 44, 33 we read, the God gave them great grace. You see, these days our preaching and uh, teaching have been filled with so many things, so many factors. I am also guilty of it. But we speak only about resurrection few times or around the day of the resurrection day. Isn't that a tragedy? The greatest power God has given us, but we hardly meditate on it. Here we have the secret of the apostles. Here we have the power to do what they did. Here we have the way to show the world who God is. But it is shockingly absent from our teaching. So shockingly absent from our life. There is no great grace on us because there is no great teaching on the resurrection in our lives. There is no great fall uh, meditation on the resurrection of God. But you, you take the apostles, the, pre, um, the acts of the apostles, you'll see if you read all the 28 chapters, you see, they spoke about resurrection. They spoke about the, how God came. He came alive. And their power was that he is alive. That was their power. This should be our power. As I read the book, as I read the book of Acts, it never fails me. It, it never, uh, you know, um, sort of, it never uh, 
fails to surprise me it never fails to touch my heart that they spoke about resurrection they were eye witnesses they could not contain the joy of resurrection they said you do anything we know my god lives you can kill me you can break me you can do anything but i know my lord lives the authorities were fed up the romans were fed up the surrounding villagers were fed up all the time they spoke about resurrection resurrection as the result god gave them great grace i want to tell a story which illustrates this very well uh, 10 years ago uh, for no no many years ago uh, robert Mo and mary moffat maybe a beginning of 18th century for 10 years they labored in uh, what is now called botswana without any encouragement to brighten their way they could not even get a single convert in 10 years finally the authorities of their mission board began to question the wisdom of their continuing work they thought of leaving their post but they were very grieved to the for the people because they loved the people and they wanted to serve them they felt sure god was there with them in the labors and they would see these people turn to christ soon but they the board was saying you come back they said give us one or two more years so they they they, they stayed one more two more years darkness reigned then one day a friend in england sent them a letter saying i am i want to send a gift to you guys what would you like <clears throat> trusting that in the time that lord would bless their work mrs moffat wrote back to them to her said send us a communion set i am sure it will be needed we are going to teach about christ's resurrection god honored the women's faith the holy spirit moved on the hearts of the villagers soon a little group of six convert converts were united to form the first christian church in the land the communion set from england was delayed in the mail but the very day before the first celebration of communion the set came hallelujah this is the power of resurrection this is the grace of resurrection what an amazing god we serve as we celebrate our resurrection day let us not just think of resurrection as a story and just forget it the next after just after the service we have to allow the power of resurrection the blessings of resurrection and the grace of resurrection to become evident evident in our lives not only for ourselves doing that will also bless everyone around you they will know that you have a god who is living they will know that you have a god who is powerful they will know that nothing will shake you we all know the facts of resurrection it is not there just for knowledge but to submit our lives so that he can administer grace in our lives give us the power of resurrection god is granting free usage to all believers of this power let us use it in our lives preach it share it live boldly because of it the longer we want to live an ordinary life you will go on living the ordinary life you you should not be satisfied with ordinary life you have to match what the apostles did you have to match what peter did you have to match what paul did there is no excuse for not matching even philip in the acts of the apostles did great things you take anybody of the disciples at that time did great thing thomas came all the way to india and he died there telling the word of god if they went all over almost all the apostles were killed because of their faith except for john everyone else was killed for their faith are you willing my dear brothers and sisters this resurrection day let it not just be a story let it not be an emotional thing for just one minute but are you willing to live that power in the power of resurrection are you live willing to live in the power in the grace of resurrection are you willing to have the blessings of resurrection in your life it is a question only you can answer you can answer truthfully to god and god will be looking to you let's bow our heads close our eyes Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word Lord. Father, we know this is the secret of your power in our lives. 
This is the preaching of resurrection, the faith in resurrection, that the dead things in our life will be Lord made alive, Lord Jesus, that the body will be dead and the spirit will become alive, Lord. The spirit will take over, Lord, every area of our lives, how we will be transformed. We will live in the blessing of uh, resurrection. We will live in the grace of resurrection and in the power of resurrection, Lord. Lord, I pray for everyone who is listening. Father, give them the mind, give them the heart, Lord, to seek after it, Lord Jesus, like a deer um, seeks after water in a dry and thirsty land. Let them look for this, Lord, in their lives. Let them, Lord, look to match what you did in the, with the apostles. Lord, many people say that the apostles' time was over, but Lord, you have never stopped, Lord Jesus. You have never stopped doing what you are doing. You have given the same power to us. Father, help us to be transformed with it. Help us to be, help us to change with it, Lord Jesus, and to bring glory to you. We thank you, Father. I commit everyone who has heard, Lord, into your hands. Be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. I pray, Lord, let them decide today that they will become powerhouses, that the places, uh, the houses around their homes will be transformed. The city they're living in will be transformed, Lord, just like the uh, John Getty, Lord Jesus that there was no very uh, few Christians, but let their, let their epitaph say, Lord, that there were few Christians, but when they died or when they went away from here, there were no more heathen. Father, I want everyone who has heard, Lord, to become like that, Lord Jesus. If you can do it with John Getty, if you can do it with the apostles, you can do it with us. I pray that you transform us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I commit it into your hands. Be thou glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.